Hi, fashion industry sketching. I thought I would just hop on and review kind of what I'm looking for in your final collection. Let me know if you have any more questions or anything you would like me to review this week really quick. I can hop on on Wednesday and make a, a quick recording for you or you can log on to my office hours. I'm looking forward to seeing you at the critique next Tuesday in Zoom. That'll be awesome. I can't wait to see all your faces. And I just wanted to review kind of the layout and structure of like placing a collection together on the page or separately on separate pages. In the original version of this assignment, we were also supposed to draw flats. I've removed that portion of the assignments in order to make everything easier. We might have laid out our collection looking something like this had we also been required to draw flats where each design is almost in its own little section and we have the flats, the garments, the colors, the textiles, all for each of the garments here. Since we aren't drawing flats, your collection display might or your collection presentation might look something more like this where you have no flats but your illustrations all lined up all beautifully rendered by the way these should be polished illustrations um, and then they've got these gorgeous textile scans underneath um, with, to add kind of atmosphere and texture there these do include flats, but I just loved um, the layout of these illustrations and how um, they've gone ahead and like made one smaller. I think that's the back view of one of them. But having that depth in there is really awesome. Uh, this includes flats, but I loved the simple poses these croquis were in and like how simple the the outline of the body is as opposed to like the rich uh, texture and gradients they have in the clothing. This isn't fashion illustration, but I thought that this structure and layout was nice. I thought that these um, including their fabric manipulations in there and potentially these are even images of some draping overlaid with illustration and like watercolor. Um, these are gorgeous digitally manipulated illustrations. This is a, a straightforward way to display your collection all on one page. Um, but all I want from you all is for you to address the composition in some way. You shouldn't just be plopping these illustrations down on a blank page, even if that's how you draw them, let's assemble them onto a background somehow, you know, get them cleaned up um, and arranged compositionally beautifully for the portfolio. I thought I could experiment with my collection a little bit more. These are the original illustrations that I dropped in here, so they have all of their layers. Um, so I'm not going to mess with them too much, but I thought, let's try, you know, a few different ways of making them stand out on the page. Uh, I drew a really soft layer of um, black, and I made it really transparent using soft light. That's what it looks like in real life. Um, and this just kind of grounded them, but let's try adding a drop shadow to them. So I'm not sure if I can add a drop shadow to a group, but let's find out. Um, drop shadows and a lot of other really neat effects are in um, this little FX panel down at the bottom here. So we have that group selected and we're going to choose drop shadow from that panel. So it is, it's adding a nice drop shadow all the way around it. Um, we can 
change the distance of the drop shadow and the direction it goes. So if we wanted to go more like at a 45 instead of it was going straight down before, which looked a little funky. Um, I think that that's really interesting. So we could add that drop shadow to all of the groups. I guess we have to do it one at a time. And you can see the drop shadow has appeared underneath them. Um, there are other effect options. Maybe you want to add a solid line all the way around the illustration. I've had to, I've had to do this occasionally, use a stroke, and um, we can see over here that it's going into the artwork, but we can change so that the stroke is all on the outside. And it's not working that well because this image has some stray bits and it's kind of fuzzy around the fur. Um, but we can remove it easily and just add that drop shadow that the other one has. Again, I'm going to ignore the stray bits for now. We would be able to find those with auto select, maybe. If we lock layer seven and try to select hmm. Oh, well. Uh, all of these being in groups is really handy, but sometimes it makes uh, for confusing effects. Um, what we can do is we can use a clipping mask to kind of remove those. Um, clipping masks are handy for moments like this because they can be applied to groups like without you having to merge everything. Um, so I'll just select around the areas that I don't want to have a drop shadow, which really what's happening is there's just a few pixels there randomly. And I've selected the inverse, so everything else will show up in this group except for those. And you can apply a clipping mask to a whole group, which means that they won't show up anymore. So that was the best solution, I think. Uh, so I'm going to add the drop shadow really quickly to these last two and we can also transform the groups all together. So if I have this group selected I'm going to uncheck auto select. I can choose control T and now because auto select is unchecked wherever I move it's going to move the whole group. It's not going to separate any of these pieces. So I could make her smaller and maybe she ends up being in the background a little bit. And these two will come to the foreground. Change the layer order. Beautiful. So I've added a stripe with a gradient on it. There's actually a couple gradients on it. Um, and what we can do is potentially add a gradient in the background or something like that. Um, the gradient tool is 
really fun. Let's make a new layer and gradient tool lives under the paint bucket tool. And right now it's going from black to transparent. Um, but we can change it to any kind of colors. Um, and you can also create custom gradients using the gradient panel. Um, so we can choose new and this gradient. I think that also would have been available in the properties panel there. New and this gradient editor comes up and we can double click on the colors and if we if we want to get a specific color like if I want to start with this rose color I can just move on to the artboard and choose it okay and should go to white or should we go to the darker pink let's let's try this maybe we will add a shock of white in the center. And we can make we can make that thick or as thin as we want. I think I can delete them like that. Yeah, there we go. Beautiful. So let's then we can choose which type of gradient we want it to be. I think maybe we've already made it a horizontal gradient. Um, and there it is. made a new layer to experiment with the gradient tool. It's just going pink to transparent though. Oh, even that is interesting. Um, I guess I'm not an expert at gradients in Photoshop. Yeah, I wonder if we double click here. Uh, so here we can get the standard gradients that are available. Um, it doesn't seem like we can edit the colors of the existing gradients. So that's not that helpful. Um, I might add some textile samples in. So I have images of my fabric samples saved in my Adobe Creative Cloud library. So I might just drop these in and see what I can do with them. And this will just add some visual interest to the page and kind of keep telling the story.
So I'm going to bring these above the line. I'm going to arrange them all on one side of the page. And I might split the page into even rows, and I can do that really easily by going to View, New Guide Layouts, and I've already set my margins on this, on this document, so it's going to ignore those, and it will just split the interior section into four rows for me. And it's giving it a little bit of a gutter, which is the space in between. That's, that's why there's two for each. Um, but I think I want it to be zero. And we don't want any columns. I say OK. And I'm going to start trying to like hit Control T. I'm going to turn on auto select so I can move them around freely. And with control T, I can adjust them until they are all this size. And then I'll see what I need to do. Really, I should have view snap to on, snap on, and this way it'll snap to the guides, which um, would make this nice and easy. So I can um, I can choose to individually like remove the left side of these so that they all line up, or I can do it to all of them at once by making them into a group, selecting where I want them to still be visible, and then applying the clipping mask or a layer mask to the whole group. Um, so let's try that below the line. Not quite. Um, yeah, I might keep playing with the composition of this. Maybe we have a inspiration image over here or some kind of um, mood image um, or even just some textural lines and stripes in our kind of colors. Um, anything to kind of keep your eye moving around the page. I have my colors for this project also saved in here, not this green one. I don't know how that got in there. Um, so let's do a few vertical stripes, which or maybe we continue and we do a few more horizontal stripes. Um, probably I should have made this one line up with the bottom of the um, the line and also like start at the top of the line, I should have allowed for more um, relationship between the line and these, um, these swatches. I think that that would help the composition here not to have as many spaces where things start and end with horizontal lines. Um, Let's add some stripes. You can actually do it using a line tool, and you can choose for a line tool if you want something to make pixels or paths. And I think 
um, or shapes, which all are slightly different. Pixels are probably going to have the most expected results. Um, so I'm going to choose my color and create a few horizontal lines on the page and we can make them thicker or thinner up here in the properties panel and I think I'm just going to make the hue at all sizes maybe they should be vertical Let's bring those above the line. They accidentally went into uh, the group with the layer mask on it, so they disappeared there for a second. Um, I think that that looks really interesting. Let's try moving all of the Crokies a little bit over. The files are so big they do that sometimes. Um, they kind of glitch out. Yeah, so I might keep playing with this for a while, but this is getting to the general idea of kind of an acceptable presentation or really uh, a really great presentation. So keep those ideas in mind. We're, we're looking for, you know, composition and visual interest and storytelling on the page.